Hello everyone, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. Today we're finally doing the in-depth review of the Bukin Notea, the 10.3 inch e-note taking device. And here it is, the Notea 10.3 inch uh, e-note taking monochromatic device from a French manufacturer and company called Bukin. Now, um, Notea is their first uh, uh, product that is in the larger format, so 10.3 inch and also a note taking capable device. Um, so let's check out first the design and build quality. Well, right off the bat, you can definitely say that this design or the Notea um, is strongly resembles Remarkable 2 design, um, but it's not exactly the same. And I believe that it does have certain advantages. Advantages. Now the similarities are obviously the side that is darker to the right side to the left side and the most striking feature which is a very good feature to have is that the frame color uh, around the screen has the same shade of gray or a very similar shade of gray as the blank screen does because the blank screen is never white so if you have a white frame against this one then it actually contrasts so remarkable is pretty much the remarkable 2 is the, the first device that actually did that and i'm very happy to see that some manufacturers Mo mobiscribe also did that and now notaire is doing that and this is simply a very very logical way to do things um, to kind of even things out and to provide comfort for prolonged use, be it reading or writing. Now, I mentioned that um, Notea has uh, similarities, that strong similarities to the Remarkable 2 design, which is obvious, but it does have certain advantages and they may be surprising to some. So my first advantage that I would actually uh, mention is that the build quality and the build materials of the Notea are uh, all plastic. So you have a plastic bucket on the back and everything simply slots into that bucket. Now, why would I say that the plastic design is uh, better? Well, because if it's a good type of plastic, which this is, and the design internally is done in a good way so that the device is strong, but flexible, this means that uh, for the prolonged duration of time, when accidents are bound to happen, so the device is bound to slip, fall or slip out of the purse or something like that and fall to the ground when you have a plastic uh, device the plastic is much more elastic and less brittle and uh, when compared to aluminium and pure glass now remarkable too is an all aluminium and glass on front and on the back which feels nice it's definitely super premium and it's absolutely gorgeous there's no uh, question about that but the negative side is that it's definitely a more, much more fragile uh, type of a design. And the same thing applies to Note Air as well, aluminium and glass. Now, one thing to mention though is that I, um, it seems like that the Notea is using Carta HD display, which is a glass panel. So there is some fragility that needs to be taken into um, account when dealing with the device, um, as as opposed to if it used um, e ink Carta Flexible, when it would be even more uh, um, durable. But the overall impression is that this is a very, very well built. Uh, device very sturdy but flexible enough to kind of make me feel comfortable that if it falls somewhere it's not just going to fall apart it's actually going to be able to withstand that and all of the important stuff is protected by this bucket design um, approach. Now, the second thing that I also find as an advantage, uh, as opposed to the Remarkable 2 design, is that the frame width is equal on the verticals and on the horizontals. So, uh, when you couple that with the uh, fact that the Notea has a gyro inside, which means it can do auto rotation, that means that regardless of which way of you orient it, be it portrait left-handed, right-handed, uh, uh, landscape up or landscape down, you will have 
a symmetrical outline around the content that you are reading and you will have a same situation for holding and handling the device which is not the case with the remarkable 2 for example because it does have that extended piece down here because all of the electronics because of the thinness of the remarkable 2 all of the electronics is of course down here and a little bit of screen electronics on the side so that combined um, i do personally really really prefer this type of a design something that note air for example has and it's very nice to see it on the notoya as well the back is very nicely designed as well this kind of a uh, dark midnight kind of gray maybe even a little bit of bluish depending on where you look at but you know very very faint tint of color there but really really lovely design the thing that i absolutely love is that um it's a standard type of a tablet design but it does have this slanted kind of an edge that goes from any corner and ends up with this flat surface so what you have actually is of course uh, aesthetically it's very nice just an Optea and a little bit of legal mumbo jumbo here and the stereo speakers output down there and nothing else why do i like this well first of all aesthetically pleasing but most importantly it's very comfortable to hold in your hand the edges are uh, nicely rounded and the the slanted surface here provides just enough of an angle to comfortably hold this in your hands when you're reading for an extended period of time. Additionally, the flat surface here provides a nice type of a uh, secure uh, um, uh, contact with the ground, so it doesn't slip as much, but it would have been nicer if we had just tiny little rubber feet, just very, very small ones, very, very thin ones, to completely eliminate the sliding, because sometimes while you are writing over time, not much, but a tiny bit of sliding will occur. So that's something that could have been avoided with tiny little uh, silicone feet down there but that's just a minor thing um, overall design um, yeah I really really like it as you can see so just to cover the layout on the top you have the power button nothing on either of the sides and on the bottom you have the USB-C for connectivity charging data communication and OTG capabilities on the front you got your screen you got your I believe stereo microphone and as already mentioned on the back we have stereo speakers so a very simple clean kind of a design um, but yeah I, I love how it looks the negatives um, yeah for me there's only like two negatives that are worth mentioning um, the first one is that there isn't a way to fasten the pen even though it has a very strong magnetic kind of a, a cap here that covers the uh, the charger port um, and as a as a magnetic thing it kind of I, I found the pen slapping and, and kind of connecting to other metal surfaces um, unfortunately it hasn't been designed in such a way to kind of incorporate the pen in any way so you need a cover that's going to hold your pen and I think that's one of the negatives of the design the second negative is I believe more important one and that is the weight um, this is a weighty uh, device I believe primarily because it has a massive 4000 milliamp uh, battery and that affects the uh, thickness as well it's not super thick because of the design I think it uh, eight millimeters it's definitely something that you can easily handle and it just doesn't appear as a thick device because of the design the way it's done but uh the weight four six four hundred and sixty grams some people will definitely find that as a deterrent and as a potential problem i personally don't but i do feel it and i would classify it as a heavier device when compared to Note Air, Note 3, Remarkable 2, etc. Specifications wise, it's a relatively well balanced device. So it's powered by a pretty much standard quad core 1.8 gigahertz CPU that you can see in most of the e note taking devices and e readers uh, these days. Um, it has 2 gigabytes of RAM at its disposal and 32 gigabytes of storage. Out of that, 32, I believe around 27 is at your disposal and the rest is reserved for the system 
system and everything else. And the screen itself, as I said, is a 10.3 inch e-ink Carta HD, and which runs the resolution which is standard well, 1872 by 1404 at 227 pixels per inch. And it is monochromatic, so not a color unit, it's a black and white unit. Um, it has a dual color front light, which is controllable independently. You can lock it together, you can turn it off or, you know, slide all the way. More on that in the screen section when we're uh, testing out the screen. Um, it's also touch and EMR compatible. So even though it does have this kind of special pen, uh, which, um, yeah, well, while we're at the pen, um, the, it also has a, yeah, a, a pen that's not so ordinary. So uh, you can use your normal EMR pens on this device because it is EMR compatible. But the pen itself, even though it's active, is a combination of yeah, it can work in active or passive mode. So even though it does have these three buttons, it doesn't have to use them um, because it's an active pen. That means that it is powered, uh, but the battery is built in and it's powered or charged by a micro USB cable, not a USB-C. Uh, the pen itself, as I said, it works in active and passive mode, but it does use standard nibs that you will use, find anywhere else. So that's a good thing as well. Uh, it's the device itself is powered by a 4000 milliamp battery, which is quite large. It does have USB-C and USB-C OTG compatibility up to a point. So like many of the devices, some things work, some things don't. We'll talk about that later as well. It has Wi-Fi connectivity only 2.4 gigahertz, which is a good and a bad thing. But then, you know, if, if you run into a place where it, it, for some strange reason, only has 5 gigahertz, that might be an issue. Um, it has Bluetooth 4.2 support. As far as software goes, it's powered by an Android 8.1. And for me, I think that's a down point because, um, yeah, 8.1 at this point is just a little bit too old, uh, both security wise and both um, application compatibility wise, because a lot has been done um, in, 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 in so many applications that it actually makes a very significant difference between an Android 10 powered device like Note Air, for example, and an Android 8.1 uh, device like the Note is. So one practical example is Google Keep. Um, in this version, it won't work properly. It, it will show, but it will never enlarge and you can't effectively use it. While that's certainly not the case on Android 10 and uh, Notebooks Note Air. So Android 8.1 here, unfortunately, maybe they'll someday improve it to Android 10. Who knows? It would be nice, but this is what we got. Dimensions are 191 millimeters by 252, and the thickness is 8 millimeters. Definitely on the thicker side of things, but as I said, because of this design, because it's so thin on the edges and then thickens up at the, at the back, uh, you don't get that impression that it's a massive device and you don't get the slab kind a bricky type of a uh, feel so it's elegant and feels thinner than it actually is and of course the weight 460 grams definitely on the heavier side one of the heaviest uh, uh, units there and plus if you add a cover of some sort then you're definitely looking at over half a kilo which is um, quite substantial the screen is, as already mentioned, 10.3 inch e-ink Carta HD, both touch and EMR compatible. It does have a front light control. And as you can see, you have the ability to lock it together and it can go all the way up and it offers quite nice or basically excellent uniformity all around the corners and it offers a very, very good range. So you are able to have just the tiniest little bit of the front light enabled and you can disconnect them and you can use, uh, yeah, you can uh, unhook and you can have blue light and the amber light 
completely separate. So I really like how it looks. Um, the uniformity and the, the calibration of the light is extremely pleasant. And I believe that this is a very important consideration to have. And it's very responsive. And uh, for, for me, uh, if a device has a uh, front light, it needs to be able to go to uh, very, very minimal settings. And in complete darkness, this one is definitely able to do it. So if you are working in complete dark darkness and you want just the tiniest little bit of the amber light to work, uh, you can definitely do it. Um, in the daylight, you know, it's an eing device, so you don't need the front light. But if you want to glow, um, you definitely can glow and spend all your battery life on that. Image quality is quite good crisp and sharp and I think it's uh, calibrated very nicely for the contrast even in more demanding types of text where you have for example like this you have uh, white text on darker background that's already transparent and a uh, you know colorful or different background all the way underneath and still the text is crisp enough and sharp enough and the contrast is strong enough so that the text can actually pop out and the sharpness is quite quite good which is something that you should expect from a carta hd display what's not that good is the um how the color is being handled uh, meaning that there's no dithering going on or the dithering that's there is not that well implemented so you have very very pronounced color bending and this kind of color bending is present in um, yeah this kind of uh, material which of course is always problematic for majority of uh, uh, ink devices but as Kobo Ellipsa has shown before it's not unobtainable and it is able to deal with these kind of difficult uh, conditions um, in a good way without color bending so the overall screen quality is excellent the image quality is really really good and um, the only thing is that if you're going to be using this to go through a lot of content that has a lot of images and all that kind of stuff you should expect the color banding thing to be present the entire front of Notea is covered by this kind of a, a structured sheet which emulates or simulates um, paperish kind of structure. Not only that, it also mutes down and dulls down the reflections really really nicely now i'm pointing it directly at one of the ring lights which is super super harsh and just as a reference point so that you can see here is the remarkable two and you can see that for all intents and purposes the diffusion of the reflections and the screen surface quality and structure is pretty much identical uh, between the two so excellent reflectivity really really good surface and overall great performance as far as the screen and the screen quality and reflectivity goes the distance from the screen surface or the surface where the uh, pen will touch the screen and the screen itself is the fairly standard one one unit i'm not going to call it one millimeter because i'm not going to calibrate that whole thing it's close to being perfectly calibrated but i'm just going to leave it at uh for consistency sake so that we can compare with other devices so let's call it one unit which is now a consistent thing that we've seen in pretty much all of the front lit devices in front lit devices it's uh usually between 0 0.9 and 1.1 so this is like a right smack in the middle, one unit of distance between the tip of where you're writing or the writing surface and where the screen is. And the calibration is done very, very nicely that you actually don't even see that. You only see it in the test that I've devised, especially for this kind of thing to have a measurable distance. The battery life on the Notea, so it's powered by the 4000 milliamp battery, which certainly sounds like a lot, but don't forget that this one is powered by an Android 8.1, which inherently always had um, slightly higher the battery consumption than Android 10 has, for example. However, I think they managed to do a really good jo job with Notea, so um, I've done quite extensive testing and research, so here are the results. I did several tests on the 
Nutel as far, as far as the battery consumption goes. And I have several reading tests, a writing test, and uh, just a general operations kind of test. So the reading test is devised into three separate ones. Uh, no front light, front light at 50% and front light at 100%. And it's basically like an hour of letting the uh, Kindle app itself use the word runner at, I believe, 50 words per minute. So this is forcing the device to quite rapidly refresh, but only a small section of the screen. This test doesn't represent uh, uh, actual reading uh, performance here because it's flipping or forcing a refresh of the screen 50 times per minute. So which is way more faster than what you would normally do. But what I wanted to do, it was the most, first of all, it was the most accessible test that I could do uh, consistently within different parameters. So that's why I chose to use it. But also it kind of established a baseline to determine how much does that front light take away from the system performance. So that's basically the idea. So uh, in the test of uh, Word Runner, so remember 50 refreshes per minute. So that's way more than what you would do normally when you're reading. In those cases, without any front light, uh, Notea consumed uh, around 9% of the battery life for one hour, which estimates around 11 hours of that super high consumption mode of just constantly flipping pages. And that's without front light. Now, if we crank up the front light to 50%, those 11 hours per charge drop down to 10 hours per charge, which is not bad at all because 50% of that front light is still very very bright I've never found myself using it more than around a third or a quarter or something like that so that means that as long as you are within that first half of the intensity for the front light um, you can freely use it it's not gonna eat up that much of your battery life so that's a good thing it's an efficient front light however once you crank it up fast that 50% and go all the way to 100 and then we drop down to 476 hours per charge or an estimate again of that super high frequency refresh rates and that just kind of symbolizes how much more energy the front light requires once you pass that 50%. So um, that was my main test. What I wanted to see is how power hungry the front light is and how efficient is it in the lower regions. And that was established. Now, as for the real world estimates, what I think that this would translate to, I believe that you would probably get around 20, 30 hours of reading, active reading time uh, with without the front light or within one third of the front light. That's what it looks like to me. But since I don't have an app that I could use that could actually simulate that, I don't I can't give you the uh, correct number here. It's just an estimate. So that's why I focused on the front light consumption so that you know what kind of a consumer it is. Then we have the writing test. The writing test has been done uh, half an hour. And then I extrapolate how much it spent during that half an hour without any front light because I established the baseline of how much the front light um, spends in the previous test. And um, during those uh, 30 minutes is spent 5% of battery life and that's constant consistently writing so some devices spend a lot of energy while writing this one didn't that much so the estimate is that you should get around 10 hours of constant consistent writing without the front light or with minimal front light turned on um, per charge i think that that's uh, pretty much okay it would be good if it was a little bit higher especially with that 4000 milliamp I, I wish it was it crossed that 10 hour uh, barrier but it didn't so it's not great it's okay it works uh, but it's not something that's kind of mind-blowing or anything like that and then basically i did also three hours of combined use real world use a little bit of writing a little bit of uh, reading then scrolling around things then installing 
where I'm installing an app and uh, using a Bluetooth keyboard and all that kind of stuff. That was like bulk of uh, uh, concentrated testing and some transfers from USB and all that kind of stuff. So quite a lot of work, combined use all the time. And in at, that was all done with the front light at around 25-30% intensity, both, uh, both uh, colors. And for that, it consumed or basically averaged at around 20 hours per charge. So you should be looking at uh, at least a full day of combined use or 24 hours of combined use because remember I was also doing the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi and transferring of uh, um, USB uh, uh, files from to the device synchronization with Google Drive and all stuff so it was combined very much active use and in those con conditions it turns out to those 20 hours per charge. So overall, wherever I look at the Notea, I think that it performs okay as far as battery lives goes. Nothing spectacular, nothing dreadful, just okay. Notea comes with a fairly unique pen. As I've already mentioned, this is primarily an active pen, which is clear because it is battery powered, has an implemented accumulator that can be rechargeable, and it's rechargeable via the micro USB slot. The build quality of the pen is excellent. It feels amazing. It looks really, really good. Um, and if you're just looking at it, you'd go, wow, this is really cool and a magnetic top and yeah, kind of sleek looking, good quality, etc. However, as soon as you put it in the hand, at least I started to run into some issues. Now, before I go on to that, let's check out the features. At the front, we have an excellent nib that performs somewhere between a soft Stettler or and a felt tip uh, um, remarkable type of a nib. So really, really precise. As you can see, the tip is very nice and sharp, but it's not plasticky and it's not too squeegee. It's like a Goldilocks. It, I haven't experienced a nib like this before and it's super, super comfortable, very precise and gives excellent tactile feel. And best of all, if you do, do not like it for some reason, it's of a normal standard, so it's interchangeable with other names of the Remarkable 2 standard or Book standard or HP standard, which unfortunately now is extinct. Um, yeah, but yeah, you, you get my point. You don't have to mod it. Next to it, we have three buttons, which are multifunctional. We have the power button, which can function with a single uh, tap, double tap and a long press. More on that a little bit later to demonstrate how it works. We have a uh, forward or eraser button and then we have a back button as well. So you can flip pages, you can use it as a eraser and you can um, yeah, do many other things like back, home and put to sleep and wake up all via the pen. So that is the active portion of the pen, but you don't have to use them. So even if the, empty, if the uh, pen empties out, it will still write it's just that these advanced functions will not work. And I think that's a very, very innovative and a really cool concept to have. Now, at the bottom, we have the removable cap magnetically held, which is really cool. As I said, micro USB port for charging the battery and the battery is pretty much around here. No eraser on the back, of course, because you have these buttons. So a unique layout and uh, excellent build quality and a really nice looking design. However, it's not all roses with this pen. There are a couple of issues um, and yeah, there, there are some problematic design decisions for the pun, as far as I'm concerned, at least. The first and the foremost one is the balance of the pen. So whenever you have an active pen, you will have an extra added weight, which has to be balanced out properly. And unfortunately, on way too many active pens, we just keep seeing the same thing, which is they just put on the battery way out in the top here instead of moving it out closer to the middle. Now, that's the problem. If you have a lot of electronics here, then the battery can fit. Sure, but it should have been a little bit more here where actually it feels that it's really, really top heavy and there's not you can do about it and um, yeah in order to have it balanced this is let's see yeah here 
I mean, this is really, really back heavy. Now, this is not a problem if your writing stance is something like this, that you hold a pen around the middle, which would actually coincide with pressing of these buttons, and then you don't have a problem. So some people do tend to write like that, but quite a lot of people also write like me, which is holding the pen all the way down to here, uh, holding it with the, yeah, yeah, helping out with the thumb, and this one is kind of relaxed, guiding it there. A lot of people also tend to write like this. In both positions, you will have to fight the weight of the pen, and it does kind of drop out of my hand pretty frequently. That leads on to the other problem, which is that even though it's very nice quality, it tends to be a little bit slippery. So I do the two things combined, the added weight on the top and the slightly slipperiness of the design, it uh, yeah again leads to the pen um, yeah, slipping out. Yeah, there you go. That was not actually intentional. I just wanted to show it on this side, but it kind of flipped out. Um, so yeah, the, the pen can fall um, out of hand or slip out of hand. And I do feel that I constantly have to fight it in some way, which of course, after a longer session, uh, exerts a bit of pressure and fatigue to the hand. Generally speaking, I find this pen to be a conflicting experience, mainly because of those, uh, it's like two extremes. On one hand, you have wonderful design and build quality and you because of this nib and just how it's actually implemented the nib the pressure sensitivity is really good and the precision is really really good especially if you're using a thinner pen because I was just testing something out here but when you set it down to thinnest then you have absolutely excellent control and the pressure sensitivity it's not for drawing it's just to mimic a normal pen how it actually feels so what I've actually noticed is that you can have have very very nice precision from this type of a pen and as a result it tracks your handwriting very very precisely which means that the finer nuances of your handwriting are captured by the device this is not a given this is not something that happens uh, or that you have on all of the devices so that's an excellent thing then you couple that with the multifunctionality of these buttons which is not just for the writer or the reader i mean i can just press and hold and put the device to sleep or press and hold and wake it up which is really really cool or if you're in a document you can use the forward and back buttons like this and basically kind of uh, go through your book or a document but just by pressing buttons here now if you're successful and you can actually cast the image this button also can double as a remote controller for a presentation so huge amounts of flexibility and functionality from a simple pen. But then, on the other hand, you have the stuff that I mentioned already, the balance, the slippery material, and uh, the sheer size of it. It's really, really thick and really, really long, and for extended periods of time, it's kind of uncomfortable. So that's the source of mm, somewhat frustration for me, because there's so many excellent elements to this pen and so many unique elements to this and functionality in the design and the performance the performance first and foremost for me it's like a really really good performing pen but for me personally maybe it's just me and my hand and my writing style unfortunately it doesn't suit my writing style or ergonomy at all and i find it very uncomfortable and difficult to use so the end result is like i really 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 want to use it because it has so many cool things but then when i do it hurts my hand. So um, hopefully uh, people who are used to thicker pens and thick and longer pens, they won't have a problem with that. And then you're going to have an awesome experience because it's a really, really good pen. Um, but if you prefer thinner, lighter pens, then this is definitely something that you have to take into consideration. But here's the thing. If that doesn't suit you, you get yourself the other pen and you just continue writing because it's EMR compatible. So that's something that you definitely have to keep in mind as a positive.
The writing feel on the Notaire is excellent. In if I need to write, uh, uh, kind of wrap it up in one word, it's definitely excellent. It has this rare combination of everything being calibrated and balanced out just right. So it has the right type of surface and right type of friction so that it does offer kind of a feel, so it's not glassy at all, but it's not super raspy to eat away the nib and to actually, you know, provide too much resistance when writing. Um, it has the uh, balance, right balance of speed or really, really good latency speed, super precise uh, results. When you combine everything together, you get a really, really good writing experience. The default nib, as I already mentioned, feels excellent. It's just a shame that it's uh, hooked up to the uh, pen that is so large. It would have been nicer if it was at least thinner. I think that then I wouldn't have that many uh, problems with it, but maybe it's just me. Uh, the, the bottom line is that problem with the heaviness, it does interfere with the overall writing experience. However, on the other side, the precision and the uh, um, pre uh, uh, pressure sensitivity is so finely, finely calibrated that whenever I return to this pen, I just get better results. I get better capturing of nuances of my uh, handwriting, right? Of course, I'm just kind of doodling here, but it definitely feels more precise and you get more precise results, more fine results than when you go to, for example, a nib like this, which is, which is of course a lot thicker. So as you can see, when you compare the two, no wonder it feels more precise. This is not by default. It's like, oh, thinner nib, more precision. Not at all. It's a combination of many, many things and other devices have tried and they used thinner nibs, but the overall balance of configuration and calibration and everything else is simply not at this level. And Booking uh, Nutia does offer something quite, quite exceptional when we're talking about the writing precision and uh, finer side of things. You are definitely able to switch to um, different EMR pens right? And for example, my combination of Samsung pen and an HP nib or the remarkable pen or even the Stedtler pen. Now, generally speaking, I find that the Stedtler nib is usually too soft and too squiggly and all that kind of stuff on other devices. However, in combination with this device, with the Notea and this screen surface and everything else, finally I have found the application of the Stedtler pen and then it feels really, really good. And because both nibs are super, super precise and fine, as you can see, you get that added level of precision that captures, and of course, the quality of the Stadler pen, pen, which is absolutely excellent. So what I'm saying is that if this default pen seems to be too much for you, and you're just looking for something thinner and more kind of a normal thing, I have found myself while I was testing and using the Nutia to actually gravitate or not test yeah, sorry, um, I find myself gravitating more and more towards this pen and then in the end I ended up using this pen mostly on the and as a pairing combination, unless you really are depending on these extra functions, I find that this combo, Nutea plus this pen, for my own personal needs at least, was pretty much ideal because it retains the precision of the original pen, but they, you don't have any of the shortcomings such as the slipperiness, the heaviness, the imbalance, and yeah, all of that kind of stuff. So that would be like a, a, a tip if you are interested in this device and you're scared uh, of yeah being uh, uh, put off by this pen, which again, very conflicting pen fantastic results and functionalities, but some shortcomings there. On this one, I just had pure enjoyment using and writing on the Notea. First, the PNG of the, the export of the notebook. And let's see, how does that export? 
Well, on the first look, it looks okay, um, but it is of a relatively low resolution and it has no anti-aliasing at all. So as a PDF or sorry, PNG export, it's definitely not that good. It could definitely use anti-aliasing or at least on the export uh, side of things and a higher resolution would be a nice thing to see. Um, just for information's sake, let's see what is the resolution that this is exported at, the native resolution. So it's not upscaled at all. It should be an option at least if somebody wants to do that, especially for some drawing sketches or stuff like that. Now finally let's check out the same page but exported as a PDF to see the quality of the writing and let's see at the 100%. Well, definitely problematic, several problems. And I'm not sure like how can you how can you actually do this? So first of all, what's the first thing that's wrong? Well, there's no template. Template has not been exported into the uh, PDF that's exported, so that's a problem. Second of all, um, this is all rasterized and it is rasterized at without any anti-aliasing and it's rasterized at this quality. So this absolutely has to be improved because right now it does not even come close to the quality of what you have on the device itself. And that's a shame because um, you know, what good is it that everything that you write on the device looks really, really pretty, but then you export it and it looks like this. That's this too bad. Um, so I hope that they take this seriously and that they actually, um, yeah, add an option to export as vectors, um, support the option of exporting the uh, template as well. And basically, yeah, just test it out so that they make sure that this is done properly because this at the moment is not up to par and it's not up to the standard of the competition. So Notea needs to do better. Now, one of the questions that usually pops out whenever I review a device and something that people are definitely uh, interested in when we're, when we're talking about e-note taking devices is um, how does it perform? And especially when it's an Android device, is it compatible with the uh, popular note taking uh, uh, apps that people are usually using, primarily Evernote or in this case, the MS One Note. And I have it here now opened and traditionally, what we usually get because none of these apps are optimized to be used on e-ink devices or e-paper devices. The refresh technology and how it's actually being used is fundamentally opposite and different completely through uh, than the traditional display. And as a result, you will normally get this type of a performance, which you know, you would agree that that's completely unacceptable because it's way too slow. So this is not usable. And it has always been the case for most of the devices, it, that's been the case. Now let's just uh, delete this a little bit so that I can show you a little trick that uh, Notea has. Now, Notea has a secret weapon of it, its sleeve, and it's been uh, added since the last update. This icon right here, if you tap it, you will have an option for global handwriting. And global handwriting can be handwritten on all application pages, which is mainly used to solve the problem of so slow handwriting of third-party applications and handwriting editing of some pages to save pictures. Effectively, what that means is that basically you have some additional settings that you can also go through. But now that I've turned it on, so here we go, hand, global handwriting on. And now I go back to OneNote and wait a little bit for it to load. And now when I get to OneNote and I start my note taking, I quickly realize 
that this is most definitely the quickest responsiveness of any e note taking device on the market as far as third party note taking apps are concerned convert and done so this is an absolute game changer um for those people who need it i personally don't use this but i absolutely understand how big of a deal this is and i intentionally wanted to write more for a longer period of time with the hand moving and all of that kind of stuff in one longer take so that you guys can see how does this actually work because doing these kinds of things doesn't really help anyone and unfortunately that's all that we get to see uh, on a lot of reviews so i'm just gonna delete these guys there we go and yeah, this is just an example in OneNote, but the same performance is going to be translated to any app because this is basically the performance it is. It's, it's uh, you write on top of it and then it samples it and it then basically translates it into there. An extremely smart way of doing this. So whether it is Evernote, OneNote or whichever app that you may want to use, there you go. So, um, yeah, while the, the note taking experience is not as quick as on the note, uh, the native note taking app, it's, it's damn near as quick and definitely, absolutely, definitely usable. And this kind of responsiveness is faster than some note taking, um, uh, e ink tablets out there in their native form. So this thing alone. Uh, combined with everything else is a very very unique feature so while the note taking experience in the notebook itself is rather limited because i haven't been focusing now solely on the note taking experience so i just want to kind of uh, cover some capabilities of the default note taking app so for example you have uh, limited pen options they're very usable but they're kind of limited you have pen pencil and brush and you can change the size of your brush like this range is a very strange translation for the eraser it can also be like a, a trace which is track it's like a, a stroke then a range is what you actually draw around and all is deletes the whole thing you have the undo redo you have a text box to add you can add a photo in there um, and you can also change a template you can use custom templates which is really cool and it's quite easy you just simply put them in there you make them of a certain resolution which is not the full resolution they have in the user manual what it is i'll put it on the screen down there so that you can see um, for those who are interested but there's a problem because if you add that template it applies to the whole uh notebook pages before pages after and everything so you don't have an option of adding a different template per page in a notebook uh, for example you can't swipe you can't tap you're actually limited to just kind of these kind of page navigation Mm, I don't know. I actually, uh, at first I didn't like it. After a while, I got used to it. And I actually do like it because the note taking the notebook uh, app is really, really good and extremely responsive. Now, what I believe happens is that when you get, uh, when you allow the app not to think about uh, touch gestures and not to allocate resources for palm rejection, you actually get to feel that. And that's what you feel in this one as if all of the resources that the device has are focused on one thing and one thing only, capturing your 
uh, handwriting strokes and that's why the results are very very nice i actually quite like them uh it, it feels extremely rock solid i never had a missed stroke i never had any problems it, it was very simple you just take it as a notebook and you write and it's so rock solid and so unintrusive and so simple as well because you have limited options that that you do get a similar thing like with the Remarkable 2. You forget that you're writing on a device and that you're actually writing directly on a surface of something. So that's another thing that's very, very positive about this. Um, however, you do have the negative side, which is it's very limited. There's no layers. The pen or the brush types are limited. The template issue that I mentioned. And of course, a big one for a lot of them, for a lot of people is there's no handwriting to text recognition, right? So, and there's a bunch of stuff that I could actually go through, for example, like how do you, um, that you don't have an option to uh, rearrange pages or copy and paste pages. I don't have a, a selection option to kind of copy a paragraph and all of the, those kinds of things. So plenty of limitations in the native note taking app. Uh, definitely don't take me wrong there's there's quite a lot of stuff that should be there for example all the stuff that I mentioned however that to me if if it was just like that that would be a big deal that would be a very big problem but because this thing has the global handwriting mode and when you turn it on you are able to use virtually any note-taking app that you want OneNote, Evernote, or I don't know, Nebo, or anything that's far more powerful than any of these things. And you take a very, very slight hit at the latency while writing. Well, that certainly compensates for the shortcomings of the default note taking app. So all in all writing experience and with this final update with the hand, not final or the latest update with the global handwriting on. Um, yeah, that, that's a complete game changer because without it, yes, note taking capabilities would be seriously impaired and limited on the Notea with the global handwriting on. My God, that just opens up the door to something that no other e-ink device actually has. No other device can do this. So uh, yeah, quite a big deal. As I mentioned, I was quite interested to see how does Notea perform under uh, Desta test. So how much of the impression that it's uh, in a faster category of devices? Was it a subjective uh, impression or was it objective? And I'm happy to say that it is objective because it uh, has the very consistent, really, really consistent latency, uh, almost down to a frame uh, at around 49. 2 milliseconds of latency. So it is underneath that magical 50 millisecond uh, latency for e note taking devices, which is excellent. And it puts it right at the lower end, but at the lower end of the speedy ones uh, or the speedy devices of the e note world. And that's exactly what you get. That's how it feels. It feels fast, it feels very responsive, and all that kind of stuff. So while it may not be as fast as the the uh, Super Note A5X and uh, all and uh, and just a little bit behind the Note Air, it feels maybe a little bit better because of the combination of things. And I think more I used it, more I understood one thing, and that was um, the the absence of having touch input on the default note taking app. I believe seriously. Uh, re uh, uh, leaves room for the system to allocate resources directly to handle your handwriting. And that's something that I think we're missing on the other apps and that because of the palm rejection and all that kind of stuff and the touch input and everything else, I think all of that actually costs a little bit and the cost is um, stability, reliability, consistency and precision.
because those four things I consistently noticed with Nutea when I was writing. So I never had any missed strokes. The, the DESTA test also showed no, no matter how much I repeated, the speed is consistently the same, which is not always the case. This is why I always repeat it like five or ten times and then I average out the result because there always is some variation between different takes. Even though the conditions are always the same, it's just how the device is interpreting things and sometimes it's a little bit slower sometimes a little bit faster not so with notea and i believe that has to do with um, that the ability of the system to be focused only on drawing these strokes so it was in remarkably consistent in the results and that's the first time that i've actually seen that in any of the devices that i've tested um, and that shows in that um, reliability and consistency of writing and it's also able to capture very fine nuances of your writing style and the end result is when you spend quite a long time writing on it as I mentioned before you kind of forget that you're writing on a piece of technology and it feels that you're writing that you're directly writing on a surface of some sort not on an input device and uh, the only other one that actually does that is the remarkable 2 that gives you that and it gives you that with the speed and everything else and um, but this one uh, does that with the precision and the tactile feel so overall great test the results as far as i'm concerned and it confirms objectively what i subjectively felt